one um, biggest winner last week, UK 49s, a stake of 51 Rand. Yeah. This person picked up 113,000. Yo, guys. No, man. Now, do you know why all our presenters, when we're doing the super numbers, we always refer to the super the UK 49, the tea time draw or the lunchtime draw because it's such a popular lottery. At the branches, people are always lining up just to place their bets on the UK 49. I hope that you are one of them. And yet, as you can hear from Angelino, you can make quite a lot of money from a small stake, make a massive profit and a lot of money. So let's move over, Angelino, from uh, the super numbers. And I want us to talk about the sports because this is the big, Big news that we need to break, and obviously we need to get into the details of how this massive win occurred. But let's start off with number three, Ange. This weekend, who was our third biggest winner in sports betting? Well, as you said, Tips, you know, we've uh, let the cat out of the bag. Yeah. If uh, a lot of customers have been uh, paying attention to the social media. Yeah. However, um, in third place, um, again, football. Yeah. This was a multiple uh, bet. A uh, simple stake of 10 rand. Yeah. And this individual picked up 16,209 rand. Whew. How many legs was it? Um, I'm not too certain on the legs yet, but it was a multiple. Yo, okay, it's 10 rand and you win 16,000 rand. Again, 10 rand, you buy yourself three chomps with 10 rand. And uh, here you are making a whole 16,000 rand. Sports betting and multi-betting is where it's at. So um, I, I don't know what else, uh, you, what more convincing do you need? Anyway, that was just number three. Ange, who was number two? Number two, it was another multiple as well. Mm. Unfortunately, I don't have the legs here. Okay. Uh, this was a bit of a, bi a bigger stake, a yeah. stake of 200 rand. Okay. Um, however, this person picked up 44,504 no. rand. You know what? In the context of the win, 200 rand, it, it's a lot. But in the context of the win, 200 rand is nothing. It's peanuts. You made a massive profit. 200 rand turned it into 44, 40,000 rand. Guys, hey, go to sports betting. I don't know why you're still waiting. And uh, if that did not convince you, if 44,000 rand did not convince you, if 16,000 rand did not convince you from a 10 rand, 100 rand bet or another 100 rand bet, I want you to hear who the biggest winner was this weekend. You've already heard it, but I want Angelino himself to unpack it for us. Angelino, who was our biggest winner this weekend in sports? All right, Tibbs and uh, guys at home, our biggest winner last week in the sports. This person played, again, this was a football. It was a 10-leg football multiple. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a simple stake of 100 rand. And he picked up an amazing one million five hundred and eight thousand mm. nine hundred and twenty-five mm. rand mm. and eighty cents. I'm gonna say it again: one million five hundred and sixty-eight thousand nine hundred and twenty-five rand and eighty-five cents of a hundred rand stake in a ten-leg football multiple. Guys, I don't think you understand just how massive this is. And the, the greatest thing about this is that this winner, he's anonymous for now because if we tell you who he is, now you're going to become his friend and want to be his friend. Okay, anyway. He didn't even know that he had won, Ange. That's the craziest thing. He had not checked. We sort of, we sort of knew uh, before he knew, but when he checked, Angelino, he couldn't even compose himself. He's like, guys, can you please give me a day because I can't talk right now. That's a lot of, that's life changing, isn't it, Ange? Most definitely, most definitely, Tibbs. And, you know, I'm I'm looking at his ticket. No, I actually have got, um, got his actual... Please, bet. please, please, let's, yeah. let's break it down. Yeah, yeah. And um, as you say, the shock hit this guy and, uh, you know, he didn't know that he had won or... Yeah. Um, I can actually believe him as, you know, of course, if someone tells me that, you know, I've just won 1.5 million, I, I'm going to be taken aback and, and, and exactly. everything is going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be blanked out. Exactly. However, if I, if I tell you the markets that he played in right yeah. now, it's yeah. also, it's even more shocking because this was all done in the Argentinian football leagues. 
Yes, yes. He selections that went even close to one of our favorite European leagues or Premier League games. Mm. So it, it goes to show that, you know, this year was more or less on just going on um, the favorites, going on pure luck as I'm looking at it right now. And, yeah. you know, he played in the Copa de Liga, yeah. the, um, the Argentinian uh, Primary League, the Primera B, the, the Primera C. Wow. And he's clubs that i mean they they there's no broadcast no i mean average broadcast for us to yeah. look at to throw it yeah so um I'm, I'm not taking any credit away from uh this uh this winner you know mm. maybe he's got a bit in his madness yeah and yeah then came through but uh, i mean just see, this is how so simple it is he just he went in selected these 10 teams um you know home and away no. And uh, he just threw in his hundred and stake and, uh, you know, hope for the best as that's all us football fans do. You know, when we uh, call a result, we just hope that we meet it. And he met 1.5 million rand. No, Ange. No. So you're telling me that the only markets that he placed his bets on were the favourites, the home draw away. That's the only markets he for all 10 of them? Yes, 1x. <sighs> Guys, I and it goes to show, Ange, and I think as a, as a, you know as we learn and as we grow and as we also become you know like proper solid uh, sports betters, it's not always the commercial massive leagues that we are used to, the EPL, La Liga, Serie A. When you delve into the other leagues that we have available for you on Super Bets, there are divisions in there that Angelino just mentioned. They don't get broadcast, but. They are still being played. You can still place your bets on them. Ange, is this perhaps the way to go for us? Maybe we shouldn't just be placing bets on Chelsea and Manchester, but we should look into these uh, smaller divisions. Exactly, Tibbs. I think we we part too much of our knowledge and uh, our hopes with you know the um, our bread and butter leagues. You know the the English Premier League, um, La, La, La Liga, you know, Champions League betting, yeah. where we think that, you know, our knowledge um, of, 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 of football, of the games, of the form, of the teams, you know, mm. players, yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be um, an addition, you know, when trying to select those, uh, th those winning uh, games and winning results. Yeah. Yet, I think it's... Um, it's it's not bad if we actually just go and uh, shoot in the dark um, at times with these uh, you know with these mono leagues uh, shall I say where we just need a little bit of luck and yeah. Um, and yeah I mean look at it uh, my gut feeling honestly tells me that uh, the this individual um, this lucky winner yeah. um, he's he's got minimal knowledge over these these teams i mean not mm. no disrespect mm. to him mm. at all i mean he's going to be over the moon he's, yeah. he's yeah. already over the moon yeah. um but yeah i mean it, it, it's his luck you know it's um it's, it's all about the risk you take because the 100 at stake as well is uh, it you know it's quite, it's quite an amount for the average uh, yeah. for the average hunter i suppose but here we go and um i mean this is what super bet does you know every day we make uh, we make big winners, and this is our biggest winner of last week. Yeah. Just a simple, um, you know, it, it, it was a simple multiple, and it turns out to be a massive. It was the biggest win uh, by far, and honestly, he, he even mentioned himself because we called him earlier, and he's like, you know, he's been with Superbets for quite a few years. It's not like he's someone new. He's been with Superbets for quite a few years. He's been placing bets, and apparently. That 100 rand was the sort of like the lowest, one of the lowest bets that he has ever made on super bets. So he's probably always going for the multi bets, 200 rand, 300 rand, 500 rand, whatever. And he placed 100 rand, which was his lowest, and he won 1.5 million. Angelino, I don't know, but I don't know about you, but uh, you know, actually, I need to ask you: if you woke up tomorrow morning and you saw your account saying you've got 1.5 million, what's the first thing that you would do with that money? Firstly, I'll have to just not pinch myself to see if it's not a dream or not. <laughs> but, um, 
but uh, there's, there's, there's just so much. I mean, you know, it, it opens up so much. Um, yeah. But you know, get. Uh, I don't even speak about it because it's so sad hearing that someone has won. But uh, I, it, it, it's awesome to know that you know we've got some good guys out there that have been playing with super bets for so long, yeah. and eventually you know they've hit the big time. And uh, full congratulations to the, our our massive winner. Indeed, that was the biggest win of the weekend, and that's it. And we're wrapping up the biggest wins from Super Numbers and the sports betting. And let's get into the sports talk. Let's analyze what happened this weekend in the world of sport. And we start off, it doesn't get any bigger than the Netbank Cup final that took place this weekend. Uh, were you surprised that TTM ended up winning and lifting that cup? And uh, what was your take on that game? Did it meet your expectations? Yes or no? Honestly, Tebs, you know, there was so much going on and uh, I know I, I, I had to just get like bits and pieces of it. Mm -hmm. But when I did get to, you know, watch the game and uh, go over the go over the highlights, yeah. uh, you got to just give credit to Sakuma. Um, you know, we knew we were going to get a maiden, a maiden uh, Nedbank winner. There was going to be a ninth, uh, a ninth time uh, winner in the competition. Yeah. And full credit to Dylan Kerr and his uh, and his boys. Um, you know they were they, they they deserved to win the game. Uh, of course, uh, the the eventual winning goal um, it was a you know a long range strike that, yeah. that struck the, the, that the the, um, the defender's head and you know it left the keeper a bit flat footed. So you know it wasn't the ideal call for mm. uh, for a cup final mm. uh, to, to be decided that way, but that's the nature of football. And um, yeah, uh, you know, it's, um, Sakuma deserve every bit of plaudits. They the they the first promoted club, you know, to come in and win a trophy as well. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you know, we just got to credit to Dylan Kerr and uh, and this is also massive as they've you know got entry into. Um, the next uh, CAF uh, tournament. And obviously we're wishing them all the best for that tournament. It must be said that the defensive effort from uh, uh, Chakuma was absolutely incredible because by the when they scored that first goal, yes, yeah, it was a deflection. Yeah, yes, uh, that's not how you want to win the game. But that's what happened. The only thing that matters are the goals. They scored it quite early on in the game and throughout the whole game, Chipper was trying and they just could not get through the defences of Chakuma. So it says a lot about their winning spirit and also their fighting spirit to say, you know what, we even with one goal in, we do not want to let Chipper go through and score a goal. We don't want to take this to a extra time and a penalty. How cool, how nice was that actually, Angelino, that we saw a final that did not go to extra time and penalty shootout. Well, of course, you know, you, um, I mean, both teams would want to wrap that game up as quick as possible, you know, in the 90 minutes mm. and avoid, you know, extra time and the dreaded shootout. So, yeah. Sakuma, they did their job, you know, they came out, they came out on the front foot, um, they played well, they, they got the, they got the goal, they did, a, they did a great defensive job, but what I admired as well was, you know, after the break as well, yeah. they didn't take the foot off the gas, mm. you know, they continued. Press, they created a lot more chances. Uh, Chippa did have the um, the opportunities as well. Yeah. But you know, on the day they went clinical, and it was of course just um, a great display from Sakuma, and um, yeah, full fully deserved credit. And you know, it was also um, a massive achievement for for Dylan Kerr as well. Yeah. Like you know, he he has tasted uh, some uh, success, but this was. Um, back in uh, in his days I, I think it was back in like 1986 or so when he was a player mm. and uh, that was um, that was when um, he played for a club called Arcadia Shepherds I think, okay. and they defeated Shepherds in the old uh, BP top eight yeah it was 1986 wow. yeah. so uh, you know for him as a coach now uh, it's, uh, it's 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 amazing it's absolutely amazing and it's nice to see one of the uh, the small guys, you know, come up mm. and uh, and get that big win. I mean, we've got some, I mean, we've we've got quality in terms of uh, Sundowns, uh, Pirates, Chiefs. Yeah. But when you got a final and it's a Netbank Cup final, I mean, it's our coveted 
a knockout uh, trophy in, mm. the, in the country. Yeah. And you've got um, Sakuma and Chupa there. Um, you know, it goes to show the growth of, uh, of these clubs. You know, the, the players are getting better. And it's not just about the big boys making it. Uh, and um, like what we've seen just recently with how the European Super League tried to take off mm. and they were shut you know, just immediately. So, you know, it's something for these uh, these these um, these mono clubs to look at and you know that they, they, they shouldn't be bullied, you know. Yeah. Would they would they would they would the plays that they have, you know, hard work does pay off. I mean talent is something, but you know, hard work and uh, you know, a great uh, you know, uh, PMT, uh, as, uh, as we call it, a uh, big match temperament is what's needed at the right time. And this is what uh, what they had in the final. And uh, wow, amazing, amazing uh, achievement. And let's hope that, you know, they, they can um, they can just uh, kick on and uh, pick up more silverware. 100%. And you know what? Congratulations again to uh, TTM becoming the ninth NetBank Cup champions. All right, and uh, congratulations to all of you at home also who placed the bet on TTM and you made some money this weekend. I mean, how cool does it feel to actually be making money on the Superbets website? So congratulations to all of our winners. Ange, let's go over to Europe and talk about your favorite league in the world, the Premier League. What happened this weekend, especially when it comes to your favorite team, Manchester United? Well, this is going to be uh, some uh, some crazy days ahead because um, you know everyone expected uh, Man City to get their win over Chelsea, yeah, yeah. and finally uh, seal uh, seal the seal the title. Yeah. However, Chelsea um, they <laughs> they've just thrown a little spanner in the works there because the, look. It's all still there for City to win the title. I mean, it's gonna take some some real. Um, uh, they they they've got to bottle it so bad. They've got to yeah. bottle it so bad, Tibbs. Yeah. Um, and you know what? We just gotta wait and see. United did their job. They went a goal down against Villa and they came back. Uh, it, it, they've got 31 points from this losing position and you know people are wondering whether this is some sort of a trend or yeah. whether it's um, it, it, it's the way that United have been playing football recently I mean at the end of the day no one wants to go a goal down in, in a game of football mm. you know it, it's unheard of it's stupid yeah. however the nature of it is it has happened but it has shown United's resilience over all these games that when they do go down they are a, an absolute they they it's like you wake up a sleeping giant and they come back and they've got the um, they won 31 points from losing positions uh, the, the the this uh, season so uh, look tomorrow's game against leicester is going to be very vital however yeah. we're going to see ole Gane make um, some drastic changes as on Thursday, okay. the big game against Liverpool is um, is fixed, and uh, you know, of course, you cannot you cannot go into that match with a weakened team, you know. And mm -hmm. um, I know there's uh, there's a bit of irony in that in saying a weakened team when you've got mm -hmm. a strong team like like United, but look, they've got the, like four games in seven days. And this is this this wow. is crazy stuff, but yeah. you know it has to be done. So if United go and get their victory over Leicester tomorrow night, mm. and if they happen to to get the win over Liverpool on Thursday, yeah, there's going to be a lot of pressure going on to Man City when they play Newcastle on Friday. Yeah, you know it's because the gap's going to be down to about uh, just um, this, uh, six points, I think, or five points. And that means that City need only two more points to secure this title. Huh. So if they get nothing but a win against Newcastle, this is going to go down to the last day of the season if yeah. United gets their second win. Um, if, if, if they if they win all their remaining games, uh, is look, I'm. <laughs> I mean, all United fans are probably listening to me and laughing right now. And some of them also got that glimmer of hope. But yeah. this is football. No, this is why we love it so much. Yeah. And uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna wait and see. I mean, it, it all can end tomorrow night. 
Tomorrow United lose against Leicester, it's done, it's over. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So, t- so it becomes a numbers game, it's like a calculation. Now it's a, we're calculating and to see whether there will be some sort of movement and United might by a glimmer of hope if the next couple of games go their way and Manchester City does not go uh, as uh, according to plan. There might still be a chance, but a very slight one at that. And I need to ask you quick predictions though uh, for Man United this week between Leicester, uh, against Leicester and against Liverpool. What are your predictions there? I know as a fan you are hoping for the wins for both of the, the teams, but uh, what do you think from a bet point of view? Who would you put your money on? Jebs. <laughs> no, <I'm, laughs> some, some fans are probably going to hate me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you know we do get the win because there's something that exists here. There of is course. something that exists. Yeah, yeah. Um, you no, know, because we we cannot see. We cannot see. We have expectations about what happens in football. Um, however. For, on a betting perspective, yeah. to like neutrals who are looking for some value in in betting, they're mm. probably gonna know Ole Gunnar is going to put out a weakened team against Leicester as they need to put out a stronger team okay. against Liverpool. So, yeah, I, I, I think if if the if the punters are smart enough and um, they are gonna. They're also going to have the, the... Look, Leicester also got a cup final to worry about in the weekend. Yeah, yeah. So, how they go about in their game tomorrow is also going to be vital. But if the if the punters are, are, are hoping for, for something, it's going to be a weakened team. And I think that if they go with a Leicester win with United to score, it could be... You know some 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 good value there on a betting perspective. Okay. But as a fan, I think you know I'm just going to go all for a United win. Okay. Well, we'll wait and see how that all unfolds. Uh, obviously, Angelino playing his her his cards very close to his chest. He doesn't want to give up too much there. He's still a hardcore Man United fan. And as always, we always run out of time when we're having our chats. But very quickly, in terms of this week's upcoming promotions that we can look forward to, what can we? find on the Superbets website. Okay, Ted, unfortunately, the IPL is still, um, mm. don't think that's still on hold there. So mm. we just got normal rugby, early betting uh, that, that's going on. Mm. Our 25K soccer predictor is still, uh, we've got another fresh one going out okay. uh, this week as there weren't any winners um, um, this weekend. Yeah. Uh, we've got FA Cup uh, Fantasy Builder Bet promo. Um, so, uh, and we've also got our ongoing super pro, uh, pools um, that that that's still flowing as well. So, guys, just remember, um, there's also these there's, there's a game every day in uh, with, with regards to the Premier League. Mm. So, get your bets um, nice and early. And uh, there's just a little message tip that I gotta just send out to the. United fans, if I, if I may. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, last week, I, you know, um, while chatting to Obi, you know, he did ask me, uh, you know, as, as as fans, with regards to the whole Glazers Out campaign, what can us fans do to make uh, to make a difference? Mm. So, you know, I'm 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 blessed to have this platform, and you know, hopefully that uh, my my opinion can um, can go out to all my fellow United supporters and tell them that, you know what, guys, we all love this club as, as you know, as, 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 as the next United fan. We all believe we are the biggest United fan. You know, this is why we watch football. This is why we love football. Yeah. And when our club is in the wrong um, hands, you know, there's something that we can do. And um, the narrative right now that's going on in the UK is, the best way to punish these lasers is that we as fans, you know, we should unsubscribe from the from the MUTV and stop stop the purchase of merchandise. This is one way that we can hit the glazers in their pockets and um, it's gonna make a difference, but it's only gonna happen if all of United's fans you know, around the world do this thing here. So like I say, we love this club. We can make a difference even though we are not there as fans that are you know, in the Manchester area, as we've seen 
that the guys have gone out protesting. So instead of us just sitting here and you know going on social media and uploading pictures and tagging, just having normal banter, the club means a lot to us, and uh, we really need to do something. And this is the way. So let's try and hit these glazers where it hurts them the most in the pocket, and let's stop purchasing merchandise, uh, stop the MTV subscription, and let's hope that you know we can get this change of ownership or the 50 plus one, which is what the the greater narrative of us, us fans are hoping. So yeah, that's my plea to all our United supporters out there. And guys, you gotta pass this message on. You gotta create this message, and uh, you know, on your own platforms. And let's hope it goes on. And Jalito, uh, yeah. thank you so much, Sorry. man. Thank you so. We we are we out of time, but fortunately, yeah, you're pouring out your heart there. And I'm sure every single fan of Man United appreciates your feedback there and your your personal take on this matter. But thank you so much for your time and for your analysis for this week, and also for sharing some of those big wins for this past weekend on Super Bets. And thank you so much for your time. Thanks a lot, Tim. Have a good evening, brother. You too, man. Guys, that's Angelino Governor, our sports analyst and Super Bates representative. I am out of time. I'm going to leave you with some wonderful blessings and lovely things on the screen, which is another website tour coming up next. Do not go anywhere. You're still tuned in to Super TV. You also have the chance to win big. In the world of sports, super numbers and live games. Bet with the biggest with Angelino. are watching Super TV Open View Channel 150 Even issue me can change your life yeah!